Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and it is nearly midnight. People in the house are sleeping so I need to keep my voice down and try not to get too excited in this video. We've had a few videos recently where my voice has been not quite right so what's another one eh? Hopefully it's not going to be too bad for you. This is the video for the 5% series. The idea being if you follow these instructions you'll hopefully finish 5% globally and therefore do all right in your mini leagues. You're not going to win your mini league with this unless you're lucky but you will do all right and that's the point. So starting by looking at last week's scores for the players in the system. The goalkeepers Edison 9, Pickford 4. For the cheaper keepers Johnston 6. It looks like he's going to be first choice so that's very interesting. And of course we had four teams not playing last game week. For the expensive defenders, they did nothing for the ones that were playing. For the cheaper defenders, nothing again. <laughs> so defenders weren't great. For the expensive midfielders, Foden 11, Saka 10, Fernandes 4. He's still alive, look. And that's all. The cheaper midfielders, Bowen 20, Martinelli 6. And then the cheapest def midfielders, Gibbs White 7, Neto 3, He Chan 3. And now it looks like he's injured, probably. Well, he is injured. We don't know how long he's injured for. And then the rest, nothing. For the forwards, the expensive forward, Watkins, 9, Haaland, 5. And then the cheaper forwards, Morpé, 6. I do like Morpé. Not necessarily as an FPL asset, but to watch him, he's a wind-up merchant and he's very funny. And then the rest, nothing. So it was quite a low-scoring week globally. So I got a red arrow myself. No doubt people following this, some would have got green, some would have got red. So the coming week, what do we think of the players in the system? Becker is sellable. I've not kicked him out of the system because goalkeeper transfers can be a bit of a luxury. If your second goalkeeper is playing, you may want to just save your transfer till he's back. I'm probably going to sell him next week because I've already made a transfer and I don't want to take a hit. And I'll show you who I'm going to swap him for shortly. Edison, so he's had his good games now. He's got some good scores behind him, but he's got United, Liverpool and Arsenal in his next three games. So he's probably not worth buying now, but you don't need to sell him. Ray is solid, Arsenal. Leno's all right. He gets some clean sheet. I think he might be the third highest scoring keeper actually in the system. Onana's fun. If you like living dangerously, he gets some clean sheets and then he do something crazy and get a big minus. So Neto's a new keeper in the system. We've had him before, but then he got injured. So away to Burnley this week. Then next week, he's at home to Sheffield United and home to Luton. So he's probably going to be the most owned goalkeeper among active players. Absolutely worth getting this week if it's not for a hit. But I'm going to probably get him next week and save myself the four points. And then Pickford, he's possibly my favourite keeper to watch because he's a lot of fun. And he's alright, 4.6. But if you're going to buy a keeper this week, you may as well buy Neto. For the cheaper keepers, Flecken, uh, I definitely wouldn't be buying him now. You don't need to sell him, but I don't think he's really worth having anymore. Kaminsky for Luton, so they've got a double next game week. But after that, it might be you want to let him go if you wanted someone different. Sanchez, so FBL Harry, who's a Chelsea fan, thinks that even though Sanchez is fit now, he's not going to be first choice. If it turns out that's right, then we'll throw him out of the system because there's no point having him. Johnston, in contrast, looks like he's back to being first choice because they have a new manager. So he may be all right. He's um, home to Luton next game week and the next game for him after that, he's playing Forest. So I don't suppose any of you have him, but if you do have him, he might be all right. Uh, Ariola is nice and cheap. He's still first choice. Dubravka, nice and cheap. And although... Newcastle do let in lots of goals he did very well in the FA Cup game very well and he saved a couple of penalties so I have Dubravka and Becker and I think obviously Dubravka is not ill anymore I'll be playing Dubravka and just risking he is going to play and he may get a clean sheet he may get some nice save points and then Turner's not playing at the moment totally sellable but at only 3.9 he does save you a lot of money so for the expensive defenders Trent is injured if you don't have three decent defenders, but you have Trent, I would definitely recommend selling him. But if your team's all right and you've got other things to take care of and you don't need the money, you could hold on to him until he's fit again, which might be maybe three or four game weeks times. 
Trippier. I like Trippier. I've still got him. I've got no intention of selling him at the moment. And Pope should be back soon. So he's going to get clean sheets before too long, hopefully. And he could get attacking returns. Home to Wolverhampton, he might get an attacking return there. And he's playing West Ham in three game weeks time. Could get something there. Pedro Porro. We don't know if he's going to play this weekend, or at least at the time of recording, we don't know if he's going to be playing at the weekend. So I've made him orange. If you want to move him on to get someone who you're sure is going to play, that's fine. But if you want to save the transfer and risk he's going to play, that's all right as well. Tottenham do have nice fixtures. They've got Palace, Villa, Fulham and then Luton. So the fixtures are good, but there's no point having good fixtures if you're injured and not playing. Saliba, Arsenal defender, he's still good. Arsenal are solid. White's good. Walker, Man City, it's such a roulette with Pep. Which players are going to play? So that's quite a bit of money. And now they've had their double game week. He's got the next three games, Man United, Liverpool, Arsenal. He's fine to move on if you want to. Keep him if you want, but you're risking, is he going to play? And then Gabriel, if you've not got an Arsenal defender... Gabriel's probably the one to get. For the cheaper defenders, Estupinan's been very disappointing because he's not getting much game time. If he does nothing special against Fulham and Forest, then he'd be out of the system. Completely sellable. Hudogi's sellable because we don't know if he's fit or not, but if he's fit, he's definitely worth having because Tottenham have nice fixtures. Colwell's all right, only 4.7. So Alfie Doughty's at home to Villa this game week and then next game week he's got a double away to Palace and Bournemouth I wouldn't necessarily expect any clean sheets then but he's got two chances of getting an attacking return so he's all right and he's quite cheap but it may be after next week we may not particularly care for him but if you've got him he's worth holding on to and he's good bench fodder anyway Konza is injured don't know how long he's going to be out for completely sellable because we're going to be wildcarding, by the way. The idea is in game week 29, we should be wildcarding. So all these blanks coming up, we don't care about. So Nessie, so he's got a very nice double next game week. And he's got Burnley this week, a bit away to Burnley. However, he is on eight yellow cards. So if he picks up a yellow this weekend, it's going to be very frightening, the double. But if he doesn't get a yellow this game week, then we should be okay. If you've got Senesi, definitely worth holding on to. If you've not got him... I'd suggest don't buy him this week. Make sure he doesn't get his ninth yellow. And if he doesn't, then you can buy him next week. Bradley, expected to play this game week against Nottingham Forest. Might get something decent. He's a very good player. But then he's got Man City. Then it's the blank game week. And by the time it's the Brighton game, Trent may well be back. So this may be the last week that you'd want to get Bradley. So I wouldn't buy Bradley now unless you're doing it to free up money to do another move you want to do. Regarding the midfielders, the expensive midfielders, Salah, like several other players, we don't know if he's going to be playing or not because he got some injury concerns. If we knew he was playing, then he'd be worth having, but we don't know he's playing, so he's white. If you've got him, obviously you'll be playing him. But I wouldn't be buying him personally this week, not unless his flag disappears because we find out he's going to be fit and available. De Bruyne, I sold him at the weekend. And then in the FA Cup, he got, I think, four assists. Because he played the full 90 minutes. When De Bruyne plays lots of minutes, he's absolutely worth having. When he sits on the bench and comes on for a few, he's not worth having. So um, if I still had him now, I would probably keep him and not make the transfer. But I could see I was going to lose money, which is why I moved him out. But he's De Bruyne is a good player. Son, very good player. Nice fixtures coming up. So I actually sold De Bruyne for Sun. Saka, still a good player you want to have. Odegaard's a good player. Fernandez refused to make him orange at the moment. He's a good player in a bad team. He's bound to get some return sometime. He got return last game week. Foden, still a good player. He may be sellable after this game week. Man United are very soft. He's at home to Man United. But after that, he's got Liverpool blank Arsenal. So if you want to free up some funds or free up a position, Foden, you could move him on this week if you want, but next week I think would make more sense. For the cheaper midfielders, Madison, since coming back from injury, he's not been at his best like he was before he got injured. If he was back to how he was, he would be green, but 
he's not quite getting the returns at the moment. Bowen, it's not knee jerk making him green because he just got the hat trick. He's doing well now because Paqueta's back. If you look at the correlation when Paqueta was not around, Bowen stopped getting any points. Now Paqueta's back, he's getting points. Assuming Paqueta stays around, then Bowen is a nice choice to have. Martinelli's all right. Richarlison's probably going to get reduced minutes now that Sun is back and Madison's back. I wouldn't be buying him, but if you've got him, he's a perfectly good player. Sterling can be good. He's all right. Gordon, very good player. Got some nice fixtures coming up. Worth having. For the cheapest midfielders, Ward Prowse, as always, he's sellable. He's lumpy with his scores. He's all right, but you can get better midfielders. Neto's bench fodder, but he's also very good bench fodder. Away to Newcastle. Newcastle have a bad defence. Then he's at home to Fulham. He could do all right the next couple of game weeks. Gibbs White is all right. But the run of fixtures, he's got home to Liverpool this week. That's not great, but he's all right. If you need someone cheap, I probably wouldn't buy him now. But if I had him, you shouldn't be desperate to sell him. Palmer is worth having. He Chan is injured. We don't know how bad his injury is, but if it is a hamstring, he could be out for quite a while. Uh, we'll hopefully have more news shortly, but he's at the moment. I've got him as sellable. Barkley, very nice fixtures next game week. Garnacho. He's not going to be so good all the time Hoyland's out. But he is nice and cheap. So I've got him and I'm fine just to have him sitting on my bench until Hoyland's back. And maybe even playing him sometimes. So Haaland, I've not made him green but he's clearly a very good player and worth having. But if you've not got him now, you don't need to break your team up for him. You could get him in a two or three game weeks time. After this game week with Man United, he's got Liverpool. Game after that is Arsenal. So he may not do quite so well, as they both have nice defences. Watkins is worth having, very consistent, and only two-thirds of the price of Haaland. And he's got more points than Haaland. Tony's a good player. Jesus should be back from injury now. I think he's expected to play, and if he does, he gets get some nice points. The only issue with Jesus is there's possibly three strikers better to have. But if I had Jesus, I'd be fine to have him. I wouldn't be bringing him in, though. Darwin, bit of an injury concern. We don't know if he's playing or not. If he's, if we find out he's not going to play, I think he's worth selling and getting somebody in who is going to be playing. But if you want to keep him, that's fine. So Hoyland's injured. You can sell him if you like to free up a space. But in a few game weeks' time, if he's back, I'll certainly be buying him. I expect other people will as well. So it just depends what else you've got going on in your team, I guess. So Lanky's a bit of an injury, injury worry. Time of recording, we don't know if he's going to be playing or not. If he does play, he's absolutely worth having a very nice fixture next game, next game week. If you don't have him and he's still flagged, then I'd say don't buy him this game week and see what happens. For the cheaper forwards, Alvarez, perfectly good player, but sellable because there are possibly better forwards to have. And with De Bruyne and Haaland both fit, he should get less game time. Morris... Nice and cheap, 5.1, and a very nice fixture next game week. Adebayo, like Morris, except he's flagged as injured. So he's only 4.9, so he's not taking up a lot of money, but he is taking up a forward space. We don't know if he's going to be playing this game week and next game week. Ball pay, nice and cheap, and a lot of fun, and he winds people up. So Muniz, Fulham striker, only 4.5 million, but he's playing and he's getting points. So if you want to free up some funds, that is a nice place to be doing it. And then Archer, not worth having apart from bench fodder, but if you wanted to sell him, that's fine. If you've got Archer and nothing else to do, you could switch into Munez or probably Morris, and that'd be a good move. So the bench order, this is a suggestion. You don't have to do this, but based on lots of things that I've looked at, I would say these first three are almost certainly not going to play. That's Becker, Turner, Sanchez. Palace, uh, Johnston away to Tottenham, probably not a clean sheet. Also probably not a clean sheet is Luton playing Villa, Man United away to Man City, and then Flecken playing Chelsea, Ariola away to Everton, possibly a clean sheet, mm, probably not. Leno at home to Brighton, possibly, probably not. 
Neto away to Burnley. Now we're going on to keepers that have got a decent chance of a clean sheet. Dupravka at home to Wolves because he was so good in the FA Cup. Maybe that's going to really help him psychologically. Bickford, Everton at home can get a clean sheet against anyone. Edison at home to Man United. He's probably going to let one goal in, but he he may do all right. He may get a clean sheet. And then Arsenal, Raya playing Sheffield United. Regarding the benching order of the rest, this is a suggestion, as I said before. The first player you see that you've got is position three on your bench, the second player position two, and the last player position one. I'm not showing players that we know aren't playing, like Trent. I'm not showing, I think, ten players that if you've got them, you're playing them. So the order is Archer, Adibayo, Consa, Estupinan, Delty, Morpe, Barkley, Ward Prowse, Morris, Garnacho, Gibbs White, Neto, He Chan. We don't know if He Chan's playing. If he's playing, then I'd play him before Neto. And if he's too injured, he's not going to play anyway, and someone else will come in. Colwell, Poro, New Doggy, Walker, Sinesi, Bradley, Munez, Fernandez, Bowen, Sterling, Martinelli, Palmer, Trippier. Chances are you've got three on your bench now, but just in case you haven't. Darwin, White, Saliba, Gabriel, Madison, Richarlison, Alvarez, Jesus and Solanke. If you don't see a player of yours on here, it's because they're either injured and not playing or else you're playing them. Regarding captaincy, I think Haaland is a good choice to wear the old mule hat. But other good choices are Saka, Sun, all three of those are very good. The scoring order of these three, which one's going to be getting five, which will be getting 10, 20 points, could be any combination of those. Other choices, De Bruyne, bit of a punt there. If you've got De Bruyne and Haaland, definitely go Haaland. But if you didn't have any of the top three, De Bruyne may be all right. Bit of a gamble. We don't know what his minutes are going to be. Watkins is a fair choice. And Salah, obviously only if we find out he's likely to play. If he's still flagged, probably don't captain him. But if he's playing, then he is worth captaining. So for me, I think I'm going Harlan captain and Sun vice captain. From memory, I think that's what I'm doing. Any of these for captaincy is fine. Any for vice captain, but don't do two from the same team. So don't do Haaland and De Bruyne. And if you don't do one of these or you can't, just choose one of the green attacking players we saw earlier. As for the background picture, I get comments that I do a lot of kittens. I don't do much in the way of dogs. So here's some puppies. And I think the AI had a real trouble trying to draw cute puppies. But anyway, that's what it gave us. There we have it. That's the 5% for game week. 27 i think we're on sorry the sound's so rubbish again it's because it's late and i i can't be too enthusiastic and too loud if this is too bad i'll have to redo it but let's see how it goes thanks for watching bye <laughs>